Hi, welcome back to another episode of Exante. My name is Alex Dolphin, and today we're going to discuss the case of Western Union Telegraph Company versus Hill. This case was heard in the Alabama Court of, Court of Appeals in the year 1933. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So a gentleman by the last name of Sapp was an employee of Western Union Telegraph Company, and he had contracted with the Hills to take care of their clock um, through Western Union Company. So Western Union was responsible for repairing and maintaining a digital clock that was owned by the Hills. Um, it was late one night, not super late, one evening, around eight o'clock, um, when the Hills clock stopped working. Uh, so Mrs. Hill called uh, SAP at Western Union and said, hey, my clock needs to be fixed. Can you come on down here and fix it? Um, SAP didn't respond to the call or come down. So uh, Ms. Hill took it into her own hands and showed up at the Western Union office and demanded that her clock be fixed. Um, Mr. Sapp was behind the counter and uh, the testimony shows that he was a few drinks in. He had been drinking whiskey that night and he said that he felt good um, at that point in time. Um, and Mr. Sapp said, well, I'll fix this clock. Um, I will fix this clock if you will come back here and let me love and pet you. Uh, those are the exact words he said um, to Miss Hill. And, uh, and then Miss Hill said that he reached and grabbed her. Uh, tried to grab her, didn't really get a hold of her, but did try and grab her. Um, Mr. Sapp says that he didn't try and grab her. So that part, uh, the testimony is conflicted. Um, but regardless, um, the Hills sued and they said that what um, Sapp had done would constitute an assault. And because Sapp was uh, an employee of Western Union under the doctrine of respondeat superior, um, Western Union should be held liable for the assault uh, to Miss Hill. So the trial court ruled in favor of the Hills and said that you know, Western Union was liable um, for the, the assault um, of Sapp on Miss Hill. Uh, so the issue before the court was, did Sapp's uh, actions constitute an assault? That was the first question. And then the second question is, was Western Union responsible for Sapp's actions under the um, idea of respondeat superior? So let's go ahead and jump into the ruling um, on both issues for the, for the first, was Sapp uh, liable for an assault? And the court ruled yes. Um, Sapp was responsible for the assault because he put uh, Miss Hill in apprehension of immediate fear of battery. So he didn't actually commit a battery, and that's the important distinction to draw here: is that assault is uh, less than battery, and that battery requires physical contact. Assault only requires you one to put another in apprehension of immediate uh, battery. So um, they ruled that because of uh, his words and because he was you know, trying to reach for her, although that was conflated, they did you know, see that he could have reached for her if he wanted to. He was close enough to reach for her, whether he did or not, he was close enough to. And his words put her in fear of immediate um, apprehension uh, of battery. So they ruled that he was liable for assault. Um, on the second point, was Western Union liable for Sapp's actions? Um, the court ruled that Western Union was not liable under respondeat superior. They said this because um, they said that Sapp was acting outside of his work duties and outside of the scope of his employment uh, when he uh, did what he did and uh, basically threatened Miss Hill. That's how the court ruled and they remanded that issue to lower court. So let's go ahead and jump into the ex ante implications of the, uh, of the case. Um, first, I just want to talk a little bit about respondeat superior and Western Union not be held, being held liable for this type of an action. Um, I think it's important to note that Miss Hill likely would have never come into contact with Mr. Sapp if it weren't for the reputation of Western Union. Western Union being a large company, um, a nationwide company uh, that most people had interactions with, you know, analogous to Walmart now or Amazon now, a large, large um, company functioning in multiple states, you know, that reputation is likely what drew Miss Hill to have a contract to, you know, repair her digital clock over time. So would Miss Hill have ever had this interaction with SAP if it weren't for Western Union? Probably not. Um, you, you know, and this kind of incentivizes employers to not be super careful when they're hiring their employees. And it also incentivizes employ employers to be a little bit less uh, careful um, when they're instructing their employees and over overseeing their actions in, in, uh, in their day-to-day -day course of life. So, the, uh, the incentives are generated um, you know, in a bad way for society in the sense that you know, corporations aren't going to 
be super careful in how they hire their employees and they're not going to be extra careful in instructing them to be gentle with their employees and not put them in fear of immediate battery. So that's the first point. Um, second, let's just put a couple spins on the case and um, see what we think about if it would be assault or not. So first is, you know, what if SAP would have just reached for Mrs. Hill, but he didn't say those nasty words like let me love and pet you behind this desk. What if he would have just reached for her? Would the court have uh, ruled that an assault? Possible, um, something to think about. What if um, rather than uh, Miss Hill coming down to the station, what if, uh, what if Mr. Sapp had said on the telephone, um, yeah, sure, you come down here, I'll fix your clock, and then he would have said the nasty things to her. That interaction wouldn't have taken place in person, it would have taken place on the phone. Or what if he would have said even further, um, Miss, Miss Hill, yeah, I'll be right over there and I'll fix your clock if, if I do this and, and I'm gonna do this and this and this to you because I'm gonna fix your clock. Would that have been uh, you know, ruled an assault or deemed an assault? Um, something to think about. I think it would because it would have put Miss Hill in apprehension of immediate battery if he said he's on his way to come fix her clock. And in turn, because he fixes her clock, he's gonna do these things uh, to her. So um, that's the case. So there's some ex-ante implications. It deals with assault. Um, just to cap it off, assault is less than battery. Battery requires actual physical contact. Assault does not. Um, assault only requires that you put someone in immediate fear of battery. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye.